Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to talk about blood pressure. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out ninjanerd.org where we have comprehensive notes and whiteboard illustrations for these lectures. All right, let's get started. So blood pressure, when we talk about that, we're talking about the pressure of blood, right? So everyone's heard this word blood pressure. And what I want you to focus on today is that we're not only going to talk about just blood pressure, but we're going to talk about some of the, the comprehensive things that go along with blood pressure, okay? So that way, when we start talking about medications in the future, we're going to understand what's going on. So first, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the pressure or the force, which word you prefer, the pressure or force of blood on the vessel walls, right? So we know that when our heart contracts, it forces out blood. And when the blood is forced out, it's going to go through our vessels, through our arteries, all the way down to our fingertip, all the way down to our feet. And what it needs to do is carry that blood. And as it carries that blood, there is a pressure, okay? when the heart contracts and when the heart relaxes. So as the blood flows through our vessels, it has this nice linear flow, right? But as it fills, sometimes there creates a little pressure on the walls. And as that pressure is forced on the walls, there is a bulge that occurs, okay? And that bulge is essentially the pressure that we get to measure on the wall of the vessel. So with blood pressure, we know there are two numbers that we always talk about. One number on top and one number at the bottom. The first word we have here is systole. And what does the word systole correlate with in our heart? We know that that is when our heart is contracting or contracts, right? So when our heart contracts, specifically the left ventricle, because that's what we're going to be talking about as the blood forces out through our body, from the heart. When our left, left ventricle contracts, it contracts and it forces blood out. When it forces blood out of this ventricle and up through the aorta, we get that force of blood. And that force of blood causes this bulge. When there is that stretch or this bulge in the aorta, we get our first number, and that is our systolic number, right at the top of the blood pressure. And then we have the second number, and the second number is we call it the diastolic or when diastole occurs. And what does that word mean? That means to relax. Relax, okay? So when we have relaxing or the relaxation of the ventricles, that's when we have our filling, right? So when the blood is filling, we have this bulge that had occurred from systole that needs to recoil or come back down. And when it comes back down, the pressure that is left with that blood still going through the vessels is our diastolic or our second number, okay? So we have systolic and diastolic. So let's recap it real quick. We have the ventricle. The ventricle contracts, it forces blood out. When it forces blood out, it goes through the aorta and it bulges a little bit. So the aorta starts to bulge. As it bulges, we get our systolic number. Then as the semilunar valves close and we start getting ventricular filling, so the blood starts to fill, we are in diastole, our aorta gets to recoil. And as it recoils, that is our second number. Because remember, blood is never not in our arteries. So it's not like blood goes and then there's like nothing in the vessel and then there's some blood and there's nothing in the vessel. So there's always some, some pressure that's on going on in our vessel. So we have our systole, which is our top number or our highest number and then we have our diastole which is our relaxation or the number as our vessel recoils. And we talk about this because in blood pressure we always have these two numbers, right? We typically say less than 120 over 80 is great, it's not hypertension, it's a good blood pressure. And they say this number because that is normally in a healthy human who has no other outstanding issues, no other problems with their heart, nothing's going on. When the heart contracts, the pressure at most is 120 or less, usually less, when it is contracting and it's at its highest systolic, and then when it relaxes, comes down to lower than 80. That's why that number is always there, because that's just the, the norm for somebody who is healthy and has a healthy heart and healthy vessels. But when we talk about blood pressure, we're not only talking about the pressure or the force of the blood in the walls, there's a lot of things that also go into blood pressure. That's just how we measure the number, but there's so many other things that can go on to it, and that's what all this is over here. 
So let's first talk about blood pressure as an equation. Blood pressure as an equation here is BP is equal to CO times SVR. And you're like, what does all this mean? What does CO stand for? CO is our cardiac output, right? And what is cardiac output? What does that word mean? Cardiac output is the amount of blood that's pushed out of the heart within one minute. So as the heart contracts, right, it pushes blood out. And over one minute is the amount or the cardiac output. And that's a number that we can measure. So let's put up here also that cardiac output is milliliter over minute. Because that's how we define it in our units. Then we have another phrase here that we need to talk about which is SVR, or our systemic, our vascular resistance. And vascular, systemic vascular resistance specifically, because we're talking about the left side of the heart pushing the blood out into our systemic circuit. So if there's a lot of resistance there, then we can raise our blood pressure. So let's back this up real quick. We have cardiac output, and we have systemic vascular resistance. Why do these pertain to blood pressure? So let's look at blood pressure real quick. This equation is a multiplication, right? And we know that when we multiply, things get bigger, right? So if you had a cardiac output of, say, 1, so don't, the numbers are relevant, just as an example, and we had a systemic vascular resistance of 2, if you multiplied 1 times 2, you would get a blood pressure of 2. Again, these are just to give an example. You shouldn't have a blood pressure of two, <laughs> it wouldn't be good. But if we had increased cardiac output, say, to five, right, and our systemic vascular resistance was still two, now we have a blood pressure of 10, right? So these are just showing you that if we were to increase cardiac output, we would increase blood pressure. Same thing to occur if we were to change this to one and this to 10 and our systemic vascular resistance was 10, and our cardiac output stayed 1, we would still have an increase in blood pressure. So I just want you to understand that if you were to increase these, your blood pressure would increase. And you're like, but wait, systemic vascular resistance, there's a lot of things that go on with that. There is. Remember, with systemic vascular resistance, we're talking about the vessels after the heart, right? And they can be resistant in a couple different ways. One is viscosity. So remember that the heart, or the blood that's pushed out, it can be viscosity can be changed. It can be really thick, it can be really thin. And that can create some resistance within the heart. There's another thing with the vessels, their length. So vessel length can change resistance. And the last is the diameter. If the opening's really narrow or really wide. Okay, and all of those also play a part in blood pressure which play a part in the medications that we may give a patient to either raise or lower their blood pressure. So just understand for this video that if we can change systemic vascular resistance or change cardiac output, we would then be giving the patient a higher or lower blood pressure. But you're like, cardiac output, we didn't really talk about that. Well, we are now. We're gonna have a whole other video about it in depth, but we're just gonna touch on it really quickly here. So we have cardiac output is equal to HR times SV. What is HR? HR is heart rate. And how do we measure heart rate? If you're going to a patient's room and you're like, I need to check your heart rate, how do you measure it? It's usually a beat over a time, right? So we specifically do it a beat over a minute. How many beats per minute? And then we have the SV here. What is SV? SV is, it's actually <laughs> right here, it's our stroke volume. And what does the word stroke volume mean? Stroke volume means the amount, or the volume, milliliter, per beat. Which, this all makes sense when we're talking about heart rate, we're talking about cardiac output, and we're talking about blood pressure. So let's think about it real quick. Cardiac output, we already said, is the amount of blood ejected from the heart in one minute, right? So cardiac output is milliliter per minute. 
which is equal to heart rate, which we said was beats per minute. And then we said it was multiplied by the stroke volume, which is milliliter per beat. And you're like, this is a lot of math for, for a blood pressure video. But I just want you to understand that if beats, when beats cross out, we get milliliter per minute, and that is cardiac output. And if we change, again, with a patient, if we're altering their heart rate, that could alter the cardiac output. And if we alter the cardiac output, we're altering what? Blood pressure. Okay, the last thing to touch on really quickly here, wrap up this video, is stroke volume. With stroke volume, we're particularly talking about the amount that the volume per beat within the heart, right? And there's three ways that that can be even broken up even more. The first is preload. And preload is the amount that the ventricles stretch. And what does that mean? Remember, when we fill the heart up, right, as we start filling the heart up with blood, right, we have ventricular filling, right, it's called diastole because the ventricles are relaxed, they're filling. When they're finally filled, we have what? We have N diastolic volume, right? And that N diastolic volume is then our preload that gets pushed out of the heart, right? So that's the amount that we need to push out because it's going to be stretching. When it stretches, we need to be able to push that out. When we do push that out, the next thing for stroke volume is contractility. Is it a strong contraction or is it a weak contraction? Right? That also will play a, a role in our stroke volume. And the last is going to be afterload. With afterload, we have the pressure the ventricles need to work against, which sounds a lot like what? Sounds a lot like resistance, right? Resistance. Because if they, if the heart needs to work harder, contract harder, or work harder, then we need to up our stroke volume, right? We up our stroke volume, we up our cardiac output. If we up our cardiac output, we up our blood pressure. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Our rain engineers in this video, we talked about blood pressure. I hope it made sense. We talked about all of these things right here because if you understand this at its basis, then a lot of the hypertensive medications that we talk about are gonna be so much easier to understand. So I hope it made sense. I hope you liked it. And as always, until next time.